Um, we're just going to put ourselves on mute. We've got about two minutes before we actually get started. So welcome and uh, just be patient for two minutes and then we'll, uh, we'll get started. All right, hi everyone. Um, we're here, uh, ready to present to you about Medline Basics, Ovid and EBSCO. Uh, before we get started, um, if you have any questions as we're going through, we'll be monitoring the chat. If you can't hear us or anything, do let us know and we'll fix that up right away. I'm Angela Osterecker and this is Maureen Babb. Uh, and we are two of your librarians at the WRHA Virtual Library. Hmm. So objectives, what we'd like to accomplish today is uh, we're going to introduce you a little bit about what we do, uh, give you an overview of Medline itself, and we're going to look at two platforms because we have both of these available to you. One is EBSCO and one is Ovid. So we'll go through uh, some of uh, demonstrate just how to do a simple search in EBSCO Medline and then Ovid Medline. That's what we'll be doing today. All right. Oops. Sorry. Yeah. And the WRHA Virtual Library, we provide access, uh, we provide library services and electronic resources now to the WRHA staff and a whole list of community health agencies and eligible personal care homes. Uh, they are listed on our homepage. Uh, we do have quite a few electronic resources since we are now a virtual library. It's all about ebooks and databases. And we still do the regular library services. So if you don't have time to do your own searches, we're happy to do your literature searches for you. We'll search the databases, compile a list and send it to you. So that will save you time. Uh, the material on there, we don't always have full text. We have some full text, but if we don't, you can easily uh, order those documents. So that was available to you before and still is. And we do education and training sessions as well just like this one. Yeah. Uh, we're also happy to answer any reference questions you have um, and you can do that by giving us a call, by emailing us or by using the chat feature on the website, which if you use the chat feature, I've had some people ask whether or not it's us. It's, it's actually us. It's not a, a outsourced service or anything like that. So let's get started. So first, what is Medline? Uh, Medline is a bibliographic database from the National Library of Medicine. It was actually founded in, well, it's the online counterpart to the Medical Literature Analysis and Retrieval System, which was founded in 1964. So this one has quite a history. Um, it focuses on life science and specifically on biomedicine. There are over 25 million references in it. Um, and it's indexed with the NLM Medical Subject Headings, or MESH. Uh, we'll be talking about those in more detail uh, later on in the 
presentation, so I won't get into that now. Uh, the journals included have been selected by the National Institute of Health um, Advisory Committee, and so it's a curated de database, and it's, I would say it's one of the best databases. Yeah, it's pretty robust. Um, it's, uh, and it's updated regularly. Coverage goes back as far as 1966. Uh, so there's plenty in there. Um, I should note that national here refers to American, um, just in case you were worried <laughs> that it was Canada or what, not worried. Worried's not the right word. Anyways, so there are a couple of different platforms for Medline. Um, PubMed, you're probably familiar with, and if you're not, we have a previous webinar that you can watch on the website about PubMed. We'll probably be having a new one because they're going to be launching a new interface for PubMed uh, in the coming year. Um, so that one's free to search. Uh, Medline makes up the bulk, uh, but not all, of PubMed records. Uh, we're not going to be covering PubMed here, but do know that what's included in Medline is included in PubMed. Um, today we're going to be talking about the EBSCO interface and the Ovid interface, which are two different ways to access Medline that we subscribe to. Um, there are benefits and detriments to each one. Um, and so yeah, so we'll get started. Uh, first of all, how to access Medline through the WRHA Virtual Library. Um, our homepage uh, looks like this. Uh, there are two places that you can access it from, but they, they're the same place, basically. Uh, first, there's this Find Information button here. If you go there, it'll take you to a page where one of the options is Online Resources, and you'll want to click on that. Or you can do it a little bit more directly from the Find Information drop-down on the front page and uh, Online Resources there. This will take you to our Online Resources page and our A to Z resource list. So these are two of our databases. Um, and if you scroll down to M's, you'll see two options. There's Medline with full text, which is the Medline EBSCO that we'll be talking about in this one. And there's the Medline Ovid, which we talk about here. It's the same, you're searching the same information, but you're using different platforms to do it. You may find you like one more than the other. I know I have a preference. I suspect Angela has the same preference, um, but we'll talk about both of them. Um, when you click on either one of those, uh, you'll be asked to log in. This is with your WRHA virtual library login information. Um, so that's usually your first initial last name, WRHA, um, and then your password. If you don't have access to this for whatever reason, give us a call and we'll either set you up or help you uh, revive your password and your account. Um, so getting started with Medline, in EBSCO. Uh, again, this is the one that says Medline with full text in ours. Uh, so in terms of what's the, the EBSCO Medline is the one where we have access not only to the search interface, but also to the resources in the catalog. So that's why we advertise it as Medline with full text. It's the one where you can easily access the full text of the article. Um, you don't have to leave the database to get access to it, uh, though you can, and you'll see how later. If we have the data, the article that you want in any of our other databases, you can still get access to it, and even if we don't, you can order it and we'll send it right to you. So this is what it looks like. This is the EBSCO interface, and you'll see at the top there, it's, uh, or not at the top, under the EBSCO host logo, just above the, the search bar you'll see that it says searching, Medline with full text. So that tells you what you're looking through. Um, you'll see these different options. If you just put something into the search bar, uh, that's your basic search, and you'll come up with results that look like this. So I've put in diabetes here. And you can see, you know, you get the title, you get the abstract. Uh, you can see right away if there's PDF full text access there, and in this case there is, so you could just access it right from within the database, download the PDF, save it, whatever you need to do. Um, if for whatever reason we don't have access in this database, uh, you can click this check library access button. And what this will do is this will take you back to the WRHA virtual library page, and it'll show you any other databases through which 
we have access to this resource um, and you can click on those and get the article that way or if we still don't have any other databases that have access to the article you can click on WRHA order sources and then fill out the form there and we will send you the article as soon as we can um, we'll order it in from another library in order to be able to access it uh, you'll notice at the top under the search bar there's basic search which we've done and there's advanced search uh, which I'm just going to take us through the advanced search here. So your advanced search is a little bit more, it's, you know, a little bit more robust. It's got this diabetes and then there's, you can select a field so you can put that in title and keywords, whatever you want. And then there's and, uh, and you can switch that to or or not. Um, so those are Boolean operators. So they, they allow you to search. So if I search for diabetes and cancer, uh, it would find everything that included both diabetes and cancer. If I searched for diabetes or cancer, then it would search for everything that included diabetes and everything that included cancer. It didn't matter if it included both. And then not is if I wanted diabetes, but nothing to do with cancer. And you could remove that. I'd be very cautious using the... Uh, using the not function, sometimes you end up removing things that you don't necessarily want to remove. Um, you can see below, there are all these search options. So you can change the date, for example, or you can select the publication type if you only wanted review articles or if you only wanted uh, journal articles. Um, so here I've done a search, diabetes and glucose monitoring. Um, you'll also see underneath, there's the search history or alerts. So you can combine, uh, so you'll, I guess I'm pointing at something which isn't really helpful to you guys, but under search alerts, there's, um, you know, S1 diabetes, S2 diabetes and glucose monitoring. Um, but let's say I'd done one that was something else. You could combine search one and search two or however many searches you have and search with and or search with or um, and you can build more complicated searches in this way. Um, a caution about this is that there is only there's only so much complexity that the EBSCO database can handle before it starts glitching out on you. Um, so if you're looking to do a really intensive complicated search for say a systematic review or something well First of all, please contact us for that and we'll help you out with it. But um, if, any, if you're doing anything more complicated, please stay tuned for the second part of this uh, webinar where we talk about uh, Ovid, the Ovid interface, which is more robust and has more search capability than this. Um, you'll also see there's uh, save searches or alerts here. Um, and so you can you can save the search, save it for later, or you can even set up a, an alert so that every time something new comes in in this search, it's sent to your email address. And you can have it every time something new comes in or weekly or monthly. Um, you will have to create an account um, in EBSCO for that. I won't go into the details of that. If you have any further questions on that though, feel free to follow up with us. Um, also take a look at our Keeping Current uh, webinar, which we did a little while ago, which talks about that sort of thing in more detail. Um, I personally find that very, very useful. I have several, several alerts set up. Um, so the next thing, a bit more complicated, is MESH. Um, so what is MESH? We mentioned it earlier. It's medical su subject headings. They originated in 1954, but they're a controlled vocabulary th thesaurus, which is very librarian speak, but it's, it's a means of organizing content, organizing the content in Medline, sorting it, um, making sure that it's unified. You know, it, every article that's about X topic is listed under this subject heading and not some other subject heading that's kind of similar. You know, like if, if uh, there's later on we talk about pain and aches. Well, pain and aches have been combined to one term, um, which is pain, but uh, that 
everything that you want to do with AICS is in there. So it doesn't, it means that you're not constantly searching like this version of this word, this version of that word, this version of. Yeah, whatever. there's a couple of ways to search. You could search by keywords. So that means you're mm -hmm. picking any word you can think of that might be in the title, the abstract or the body of the article. And it could be something that uh, you find just randomly. Yeah. Otherwise you can search by subject headings and that's a particular field in every record. And someone has sat down with the articles uh, and uh, decided what the major terms are, what the major subjects are of that yeah. article and gone to this thesaurus and said, okay, this article is on cancer, but the thesaurus is telling me I have to use the subject heading neoplasm. So yeah. it's just that there's some consistency on what people are calling things and a consistent way to find things. Yeah. Uh, but you can always search by both methods. Yeah, yeah, no. And, you know, because this is done in a way where it's people actually going through and looking at this, um, it's a very good controlled vocabulary, yes. a very good means of organizing. Yes. I, for one, wish that other subjects yes. had anything <laughs> even half as good like as the so, mesh subject Social headings. sciences. Yeah, for humanity. example. <laughs> yeah. Um, so in terms of what a mesh subject heading looks like, there's generally a broader category and then there are narrow ones. So you can see here, I've got this heading tree example. So here's the subject tree for congenital abnormalities. Congenital abnormalities is the highest, the broadest search term, but then you can see underneath there's abnormalities drug induced. Um, and then, you know, abnormalities multiple, and under that there's uh, 22 Q11 deletion syndrome, and then under that there's DeGeorge syndrome. Um, so this is the broadest focus, and this is the narrowest focus. And so when you're considering your MeSH terms, do consider how broad or how narrow you want a topic to be. If you looked up DeGeorge syndrome, I don't know how many results you'd get, but maybe not enough. Maybe you need to open it up to a broader category, abnormalities multiple, or even congenital abnormalities, yeah. depending on your needs. So it'll affect how many results you yes. return. Yeah. Get returned. How many results you get, yeah. yeah. So if you're doing a systematic review, you want it to be broad. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're looking for very specific topics for your own reading, you know, you might be fine with five articles showing up. That might be what you'd prefer. Um, so in terms of how do you search MeSH within EBSCO, this is a little bit convoluted, but so here's your main page again. Um, and then at the top in the bar on the left-hand side, you'll see, whoop, you'll see this MeSH 2019. Um, so if you click on that, this will take you to a specific search for MeSH. And you can see you can search uh, by relevancy ranked, which is what it defaults to and which is what I recommend. Um, but it's also got term begins with or term contains. So here I've done a search for hypothyroidism and this is what you get. You get hypothyroidism, congenital hypothyroidism, uh, down at the bottom, thyroiditis autoimmune and thyroid hormone resistance syndrome. And then you'll see in the middle here, secondary hypothyroidism, use hypothyroidism primary hypothyroidism, use hypothyroidism. So this is what we were talking about with MeSH, where there are all these other ways of referring to hypothyroidism, but they're all included under hypothyroidism. So if you're doing a search for central hypothyroidism, search instead for hypothyroidism, and then you may be able to narrow it down further with keywords um, or title searches or whatever, depending on how it is. You'll also notice on the side here, so I've decided that congenital hypothyroidism is actually what I was looking for, so I've clicked on it. And then you'll see the subheadings column pop up on the other side. And so in this case, I've decided that, oh, I'm only interested in the diagnosis of congenital hypothyroidism. How do I find that out? So I just click on that and that will be the search that I do. You'll also notice that there's this, these little speech bubbles there uh, by scope. And so if you click on one of those, it tells you what it is. So if I, I've clicked on the, uh, the scope note for congenital hypothyroidism and it gives me a description of what this includes, it's always worthwhile to check the scope notes because sometimes with MeSH, what you 
are looking for isn't necessarily what you would expect. And if you open up the scope notes, you'll be like, oh no, that's not what I meant at all. I meant something else. Uh, this is less the case in terms of specific conditions and more the case in terms of uh, general terms that apply to things like hospital management yeah. and that sort, but it's still worth checking every time. Mm -hmm. um, and then when you're done, you press that search database and you will be taken to a search field, um, you know, like you saw before, a search results page. Um, and yeah, if you want to combine mesh searches, uh, remember I showed you the search history option before? Uh, you can just combine the various mesh searches. You can combine them with other types of searches if you would like. So if you've done a keyword or a title search, you can do that too. Um, and you'll get, you can broaden or narrow your results as a result as a result of clicking that. Too many words, too many times I've said result here, nonetheless. So in terms of the benefits and detriments of EBSCO Medline, uh, the main one I would say is that there's full text access. You don't have to leave the database to access the articles that you're pulling up. Um, it's also a fairly user-friendly inter user interface. It's got that kind of you know, looks like a search engine that you're used to using. Um, the advanced search is pretty straightforward uh, and you can save searches and create alerts, come back to them later. Um, detriments, I would say that it is not always spectacular at doing very complex searches. Um, now, you know, level of complexity varies. Uh, depending on your needs. And, but if, if you're doing a search that you think might be complex, take a look at the, uh, the result numbers and see if it makes sense for what you wanted it to do. Like if it was supposed to provide you more results and then you've put it together and it provides you less results, that's where you're starting to get to that, that glitchy point. Um, the other thing is that while Mesh is accessible through EBSCO Medline, it is a little cumbersome to use. Um, so uh, we're going to move on to Medline Ovid now. So if anybody has any questions mm -hmm. about EBSCO Medline, feel free to type them into the chat. Otherwise, we will move on to Ovid, or we'll move on to Ovid anyways, but we will continue to monitor right. the chat is maybe the way to say it. Okay, so Medline Ovid. Next page. <laughs> uh, so when you, if you remember, you can uh, go to our homepage and go to the access information, uh, either by the tab or below the box below and then click on on uh, Medline, M for Medline, it'll take you down and you can select Ovid Medline. Uh, so when you open it up, it automatically puts you onto a page as, as you can see here. Uh, at the very top, you would see any searches. We haven't executed any searches here, but they would be listed there and they would be also numerical, number one, number two, number three. And you also have the option to combine those as you did in EBSCO. Uh, what happens in Ovin Medline, it automatically opens up in the advanced search. Um, so we are automatically in the advanced search, so you need to be aware of that. And it also automatically puts you into the, when you enter a keyword there, it does what it's called automatic mapping. So it automatically maps to the subject heading. So That's you don't have mesh to, subject yes, heading. so you don't have to go to a separate mesh database or open up a, another tab. It'll automatically do that for you. Uh, so it, this is uh, something that we do prefer uh, to use. Uh, it's uh, I always liken it to liken this to uh, driving a car. You know, you had the Volkswagen, I've got the Ferrari. <laughs> Maybe not. It depends on your preference, but librarians prefer this one because it is very robust and can handle very complex search strings and large number of combined searches. Uh, you don't have the full text available in this directly, but you can still use the access, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, check access. Check access, thank you. Uh, and if the full text is there, you can pull it up right away. If not, you're automatically put into our document delivery system. Yes, you do log in again, uh, but it will populate the uh, ordering form and then you just have to send it through and it will be requested for you. And a large yeah. majority of our articles are returned 
if not the same day, within the first three days. Yeah. But if it's something that we have access to in another database, which these should come up in another database, yeah. Ovid EBSCO. <laughs> um, uh, so it's it's just a little bit, it's a couple of extra steps. So it's a little bit cumbersome, but the articles are still accessible to yeah. you. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, that's the uh, Oh, yes, map. this is the map to subject heading. Yeah, that's, so that's, auto, that, those, that's automatically, so if you wanted to unclick it, you could do that, and then it would just be a keyword search. Yeah. But leaving it there leaves it for mesh. Yeah. So let's say we put in the word pain. This is what would happen. You would type in pain, and it automatically puts you into the mesh form, which looks similar to the other ones. You have a whole list here, and it's going to try to map it to the one that it thinks is closest. Obviously, pain. We have pain in there. But if it wasn't, if there wasn't an exact match, it would put in uh, the closest match that it. it is that algorithm <laughs> can think of. Yeah. So you have the option of scrolling through this and you might decide, oh, I really want pain uh, referred down there so I can click that instead. Uh, what else do we have here? So we've got pain. Um, so if you click on the blue text, yes. Pain. Oh, yes. If you click on the pain, that will open up the mesh tree that we talked about in the other database. Uh, and here you can see then the hierarchy. So pain is the broader term, but there are several narrower terms under that. And there are little plus signs there as well. So the narrower terms have even narrower terms under them. So pain has a broader term. If you were not getting enough hits with pain, and I'm sure you would, you could go to a broader term, which would be uh, neurologic manifestations, or as I suspect you probably have too many hits with pain, you could go through and pick one of the narrower terms that might be more uh, Yeah, like maybe preferred. you're only interested in cancer pain. Yes, yeah. Okay, so besides that, uh, going back to this page, there are a few other options here. Uh, oops, yep, Sorry. going back. You have a checkbox there. You can explode. So if you wanted to, uh, you could automatic. You could check that off, and what it will do is it will search all the narrower terms automatically under pain. So you will get a large return of hits that way. So that's something you have to decide to do. Otherwise, you can focus the search. So uh, when they index articles, they will pick main subject headings and minor subject headings. So the focus is the major heading. So it's gonna only pick articles, let's say on pain, that's the major topic. It's not just a minor subject. It's not about something else. And they talk a little bit about pain and they've included that as a minor topic. So that excludes all the ones that are just minor topics. That's a way of narrowing it. And then of course you have the scope note, which is the same as in the other database. It's always good to check that, read that. It sometimes refers you to uh, other terms that you might want to use. So you have the same thing, a description, uh, related terms and what it's used for. Yeah, so the used for is any other terms, like if you've done a search for aches, as we said, um, yeah. and it pulls up pain and you're like, no, that's not what I want, well, click yeah. on the scope note for pain and then you'll see that pain includes aches and yes. is the term you should yeah. be using for aches. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, uh, as in, as in the other database, you have the option for selecting. After you've selected pain as the subject heading, it will then present you with the subheadings, which then you can click as many as you want or ignore them, and it will search all of them. So, so if we continue on. So in this case, we selected no yes, <laughs> subheadings. Yeah. So you can see that we've, uh, the number of results that we've gotten there is quite a few results. Uh, we have the search, we have that in the search history now. If you had another search, that's the first search. If you had several other searches that you conducted, you that would then have the ability to combine them. The and and or there are not highlighted at this point because we only have the one search there. But as soon as you have another one there, you have that option uh, to combine them. Uh, you can also, I believe, save searches here. So uh, 
you'd have to create an account in Ovid to do that, but uh, sometimes there's a search that you want to return to later. And again, or, any uh, of these more detailed things, yeah. feel free to contact yeah. us and ask. We yeah. only have, well, three minutes left. So. Three minutes, okay. <laughs> there's filters as well uh, here, and they're, they're only showing a few. If you go on additional limits there, the, bottom, uh, the box on the left there at the bottom, uh, the blue area. If you click on that, you'll see more of the uh, filters that are available to you, like dates, English, publication type, that type of thing. And you can see that you can change the summary, the view. This is a brief summary uh, where you get the title and the abstract, or you can just go to the title or the full, uh, full reference. Yeah, I believe the full reference is the one that gives you the abstract. Okay. But, yeah. Okay. It's just information yeah. on type yeah. sort of thing now. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, to order the article, you can check the library access as always. Yeah. So if we have access to it through any other database, yeah. that's where to get it. So if you still wanted to use Ovid Medline, but uh, access the article through our services, mm -hmm. click on that. Yeah. And, uh, any more arrows? <laughs> oh, no, big but there's circle. a circle. <laughs> big circle. What's the circle for? Uh, so this is just showing you the basic search. We've gone yeah. through the med, the mesh version, um, but you'll see you can remove that, and then that would take you to the, the general advanced search, and you'll see at the top of that search yes. bar, there's keyword, author, title, or even journal. So if, you, if you're not finding what you want, if there's no mesh subject heading, and this is oh, sometimes yeah. the case for newer topics, or, mm -hmm. or um, well, mostly newer topics. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then a keyword search might be more helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't covered the basic search for this one. Uh, I don't think the basic search yeah. is super useful. Yeah. Um, and stick to the advanced search in Medline. Um, and uh, as we say, if you just want to do a normal search, you will want to untick that map to subject heading box. Yeah. Um, okay. So it's uh, it's easier to use the mesh in in Medline. You can save your searches and create alerts, and very good at complex searching. Uh, you don't have the full text access as as you did in the other databases where you can pull up the PDF right away. So there's a little extra step there to get to the full text. But you can still get the you full still, text because yeah. we subscribe yeah. to it through other databases. Yeah. So if we have it, you get it, and if we don't have it, we'll still order it for you. Uh, it take, might, might not be as intuitive to you if, if you're a new user, so yeah, it's, we're happy it's, to answer any questions or help out. Yeah, absolutely. It, uh, yeah, it doesn't look quite as much like a standard search, and particularly if you just do a search and it pops up with all these mesh headings and you're like, what is that? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So hopefully if we've helped you explain what that is. Um, yeah. So if you have any questions, We'll stay on the line for a little bit. Uh, we know it's 2.30 now, so if any of you had had to get out of here right at the conclusion of the webinar, like, see you later, yeah, I guess. And thank you very much for hope attending. Hope you enjoyed this. Um, but yeah, we will stay on the line for a little bit. We're just going to mute ourselves for now so that we don't uh, babble away here, but we'll, we'll keep an eye on who's around.
So we haven't seen any questions yet. We're going to stay online for one more minute. Um, if you are in the process of typing a question, we can't actually see that you're typing anything. So uh, yeah, if you are typing something, maybe send us a like, hey, wait. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but if you're not, uh, feel free to leave at this point, I think. So we'll just mute ourselves again. All right, so everybody has logged off, so we are going to log off as well. Thanks for attending, and uh, see you Have on the great, recording. Yeah, great day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye.